Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lay's Real Talk. Happy New Year. I'm Lay. The U.S.-China relations will continue to dominate the news in 2022. I'd like to dedicate the first video of the year to review the two countries' performance in the international arena last year. I've made a lot of videos about China's issues. Today, we'll focus on four major mishaps the United States had in 2021 that negatively reflected on the American leadership and delighted China. At the end, I will also give you a summary of China's biggest mishaps of the year. It was the most chaotic withdrawal since World War II. Even the New York Times and CNN, which had been friendly toward Biden, admitted it was his big failure. This is about leaving hastily and ineptly. Secretary Blinken, how did President Biden get this so wrong? The withdrawal of troops, which was tantamount to a rout, greatly damaged the international reputation of the United States and affected the confidence of its allies. Not only the NATO countries, Britain and France, blamed Biden for the disaster, Americans also doubted his leadership ability. A Rasmussen poll showed that 70% of Americans agreed that the withdrawal was a national disgrace. The CCP delighted in the fallout and used the event to warn U.S. allies of the United States' poor leadership in a potential confrontation in the Taiwan Strait. During the lockdown, Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, published his book, Now is the Time for a Big Reset, claiming the pandemic provided a rare opportunity to promote the Green Energy Initiative. After Biden took office, he immediately announced that the U.S. had rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement. His administration eagerly set up the Green Energy Agenda, and the very first item on the agenda was emission reduction. But the United States and EU both faced embarrassment at the UN Climate Summit in Glasgow. China and Russia, the world's largest and fourth largest carbon emitters, were both absent from the summit. India, the third largest emitter, and Australia, a major coal producing country, are not cooperating with the United States on the initiative. Meanwhile, the Glasgow summit was accompanied by a flurry of Chinese media reports about China's increased coal production. Media called the summit a resounding failure because the winners are the largest carbon emitting countries and the fossil industry. The Democracy Summit was hastily convened after the failure of the Climate Summit. The conference was attended by more than 110 countries and heavily publicized by media beforehand as a rallying cry against China and Russia because Biden didn't invite China or Russia, but invited Taiwan. However, during Taiwan's digital minister Audrey Tan's presentation, the video feed of her speech was cut after a map in her slides showed Taiwan in a different color than China. The color-coded map she used ranked Asia by openness. Taiwan was colored green, making it an open society, while China, Laos, Vietnam, and North Korea were colored red and labeled closed. Reuters reported that the White House ordered the video cut because of concerns that showing Taiwan and China in two colors could violate the One China policy. This overreaction over a map that doesn't define sovereignty but degree of democracy, unfortunately, displayed the Washington's weakness and allowed people to question the administration's support for Taiwan. Media enthusiasm also quickly waned after Joe Biden's opening remark. American media mainly focused on the anti-corruption theme of the summit, but gave slapdash coverage to Kamala Harris' call for the U.S. Congress to pass a new election bill in an anti-voter suppression package. January 6th looms large in our collective conscience, and the anti-voter laws that many states have passed are part of an intentional effort to exclude Americans from participating in our democracy. 
The summit's international audiences were not interested in American domestic politics being pushed onto a global stage by the Biden administration, and they subtly spoke up. None of us have all the answers, and all of us have our own issues. So we must work on them. Because while democracy is not perfect, it is perfectible. And that is the difference between democracy and autocracy. In democracies, you can criticize, you can protest, and you can freely discuss opposing ideas. That's freedom. No two democracies are the same. No matter where democracy has taken root on this planet, it's unique in its own way. But every democracy has many things in common. I would argue they have the most important thing in common. They give power to the people. The United States was the first country to announce a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics. So far, seven countries have followed, including Britain, Australia, Japan, Canada, and Lithuania. German media claimed that, without a certain scale, a boycott with less than 10 countries is a failure. The South China Morning Post reported on December 24th that the United States is applying for visas for 18 State Department and Pentagon officials to participate in the Beijing Olympics, followed by 40 more officials. The State Department later explained that the officials were to provide services on the ground and that it was standard practice. But Beijing and Chinese state media seized the opportunity to declare that the Biden administration's Olympic boycott was met with growing discontent from more countries and Biden was forced to soften down after internal opinions were divided. The above four mishaps from 2021 have weakened the United States leadership role and its allies' confidence in the U.S. Let's now talk about China's mishaps in 2021. Xi Jinping has been in power for 10 years and has dealt with three U.S. presidents. During these three presidencies, the U.S. domestic politics and foreign policies underwent major directional changes. Watching the roller coaster ride of American politics, the communist regime did not grasp the changes in the United States. Regarding the U.S.-China trade war, Xi Jinping's team thought that everything would be fine as long as Trump left the White House. So they delayed policies and waited for Biden. You could gather this from an overly confident Xi Jinping in the early days of 2021. Ten days before Biden's inauguration on January 11th, she spoke at a seminar for leading cadres, announcing that a new stage of a historic leap has been reached for China and that time and momentum are on our side. And this is where our determination and strength lie. The next day, state-run Xinhua news agency published a disparaging article titled On the Fall of the American Beacon, saying the United States can no longer lead the world. On January 15th, Chen Yixin, the Secretary General of the CCP's Political and Legal Affairs Committee, conveyed Xi's speech in an intro to an article stating, East rising and West falling is the trend and the international landscape is developing in our favor. What Beijing failed to recognize was the fact that the pandemic has fundamentally changed Americans' perception of the Chinese Communist regime. After Biden entered the White House, he inherited, to a large extent, Trump's China policy. This key miscalculation by the CCP has led to the regime's year-long wolf-warrior struggle approach to provoke the United States. Domestically, after three decades of the CCP's economic reforms, systemic corruption mixed with dysfunctional bureaucracy flared up ever more evidently in 2021. The Evergrande collapse and the Chinese real estate industry's debt problems, local government debt, China's energy crisis, food shortage, and the tennis star's allegation of sexual assault all are threatening the legitimacy of the party. To veer off the path of no return, 
Xi Jinping steered the party and the country further to the left, greatly shaking private industry and foreign investors' confidence. Therefore, at the Politburo's year-end meeting from December 27th to 28th, the CCP declared the complexity and severity of the situation and environment the party is facing, as well as the seriousness and the enormity of its challenges, are rare in the world and in history. I reorganized my playlists and created separate lists for China's economy and the CCP's internal politics. I recommend you watch the video on how Xi Jinping came to power and why the Chinese economy is of such grave concern to him. That's all for today. Thank you. See you soon.